Morning folks and welcome back. It's that time of year again. I've got my festive hat on. I put the lights on the Christmas tree <laughs> and I'm out here in the woods to do a bit of Christmas cooking. It's pretty cold this morning so I'm going to gather some firewood and get a fire lit so I can try and warm my hands up a little bit and then we'll get started. I've got a wood wool bundle here and a fire plug that I'm going to use to, to get the fire going just to give me a fighting chance this morning as it's so cold <laughs> and everything's so frosty. I'm going to use that to light the wood wool bundle. And there we go. And then I've just got a load of small twigs which I've snapped off kind of caught up branches from around and about That's better, a little bit warmer by the fire. Right, so I'm gonna be cooking a festive stew. I brought along my, my pressure cooker here and I'm basically just gonna put Christmas in it. <laughs> so I've got some turkey, I've got pigs in blankets, I've got all the trimmings that you'd normally have with a Christmas roast. Um, well, all the trimmings that I would normally have, so potatoes, um, carrots, parsnips, red cabbage, um, Brussels sprouts, of course. And a few other bits and pieces, I'm going to chuck it all um, in my pressure cooker and, uh, and cook it like a stew. So hopefully it will have that flavour of Christmas, but um, all in one pot, so it's a bit easier to do. Something I haven't, haven't done before, it's a bit, of a bit of an experiment. So here's my turkey, that's um, turkey thigh, just the whole piece uh, with the skin on and salt and black pepper. And I'm going to cook that whole as it is just sitting on top of the stew in the in the pressure cooker. I will cook it first before I put everything else in just to brown it a little bit so I'll, I'll just sort of fry it off in some oil get a bit of colour on it before I um, put everything else in the pot and then I'll just lay this on the top. So that's my turkey. I've got pigs in blankets I have six of those and they're just little cocktail sausages with bacon wrapped around so they're going to go in the in the stew. I've got 
one large parsnip. I've got two potatoes. I've got three carrots. And then I've got some red cabbage. And of course, it's not Christmas without Brussels sprouts. I'm gonna put a bit of oil in the pressure cooker. Turkey. And I'll just allow that turkey to brown up a little bit. All right, I've just taken the, the turkey out of the pressure cooker so that I can get my veg in. Then I'll lay my turkey on the top. So. We're gonna have parsnip just chunked up. Buds. The red cabbage, again just kind of coarsely cut into chunks, and my, oops, sprouts which have pretty much been prepped already by the good old people in the supermarket. <laughs> I'll just take any, any brown bits off. They'll look all right, actually. Got my pigs in blankets. I've got two rich beef stock pots. One and two. Water. Bit of red wine. Hmm. Bit of cranberry sauce. Hopefully this will give it some of that Christmas magic. I'm also gonna put in some stuffing. This is just some of that instant Paxo type stuffing. I'm hoping this will kind of help it to thicken up a little bit, give it a bit of body. and then the turkey sitting on top. Right, I'll get that on the fire, get that up to temperature, and that should just take 20 minutes to cook.
The shoe is doing its thing. The pressure's starting to build up inside. When you lift the pressure release valve, there's just a little, a little hiss of steam coming out, which means it's getting up to temperature. So pretty soon I'm gonna to start to get those smells, which I'm looking forward to. It's lovely and warm by the fire. I'm, I'm starting to warm through a little bit. My toes are a bit cold, but um, my hands are warming through. They got very cold um, in the walk up here. And just while I was, um, you know, gathering firewood and, and setting myself up and things. It's about minus four this morning. So it's pretty chilly, um, but warming up. We, we've had a bit of a cold snap here in the UK. Um, it's been sort of minus, minus six, minus seven where I am, but it's colder in other parts of the country. It's been down to about minus 10 in other parts of the country, which is pretty cold for this time of year um, in England, that's for sure. I seem to have made friends with a little bird. There's a robin, which doesn't seem to have any fear of me whatsoever. It's coming right up to the fire, right up to me. It was probably about six inches away from my knee a minute ago and just didn't seem remotely bothered. I was talking to it and yeah, it was quite happy. So it's nice to have a little bit of company. I didn't bring uh, Maggie with me today because um, she just she just can't cope with the walk up here anymore. She can't she can't walk very far, and she just sleeps all the time. So I didn't think it was very fair on here to kind of inflict um, you know the cold and everything. I know she's a Newfoundland and she's you know she's a cold weather dog and all the rest of it, but she's old and she's fragile. So um, yeah, she's fast asleep on her bed in the kitchen where it's warm at home. <laughs> and sadly, Tom couldn't join me today. He was, he was working. So um, it's just me and Robin Redbreast. That's had its 20 minutes, so I'm going to take that off the heat, let that cool down and depressurize naturally. It's really important not to take the lid off of these things when they're under pressure. You know, it's basically a bomb. <laughs> You'll do yourself some harm. Let it cool down, let the um, pressure come down naturally until there's no steam coming out of the release valves. Giant Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> Seemed appropriate. A bit of turkey. There's a sprout there, look. Bit of potato. Oh, we've got a <laughs> pig without his blanket, a bit of parsnip, a couple more fart bombs, a bit more red cabbage, stick him in there somewhere. Well, it looks like all my pigs lost their blankets. Another potato. I'm just adding some gravy granules here just to thicken it up a little bit. 
actually the um the stuffing did a good job but i think it needs to be proper stick to your ribs thick on a cold winter's day like today and i'm going to spoon that gravy over the top of my stew That definitely tastes Christmassy. <laughs> you can taste the cranberry sauce. It's just hearty and delicious. Mm. And that turkey is melting your mouth. Oh, I love sprouts. <laughs> And they love me. Well, that was delicious. It definitely had that lovely Christmassy flavor going on. I love Christmas time, my favorite time of the year. Time to spend with family, time to chill out and relax. Time to eat too much and drink too much. <laughs> love it. I didn't quite get finished. I've got a little bit of uh, Yorkshire pudding left in my plate, which I'm gonna leave for my friend, the Robin, wherever he is. And uh, I'll take the rest of the stew home to, to share with my family when I get home. So I just need to get things tidied up here, get this fire out and um, put this little area back to how it was when I arrived. It's been lovely to spend a couple of hours out here on this crisp morning, cooking up a bit of a festive feast. I hope you all have a fantastic Christmas and a very happy new year. See you soon.